Okay, hi there and welcome to a video for Macroeconomics. Again, we're looking at an example exam answer to a question this time on the economics of the national debt. Here's our question for the video with reference to a country of your choice. Assess the case for a government setting fiscal policy to reduce the size of the national debt. We're going to be building two points of analysis and two points of evaluation. Uh, and using some, using some context with particular reference to the UK economy. Uh, in terms of exam advice, you need to get some application into your answer to get to level four for analysis in 2019. Contextualised evaluation, also important. Show the examiner you're, you're aware, you know what's going on in particular, particular economies. Build answers, build chains of reasoning with the analysis. Diagrams can certainly help to support that analysis. You don't need lengthy introductions, please don't waste time on introductions, but you will need a final conclusion to move into level three for your evaluation. So please do stay with me as we go through a commentary on how to write an answer on this question. The question about governments deciding deliberately as part of their fiscal policy to reduce their national debt. In the video, we're going to look at two points of analysis and application and then two evaluation points and then come to a final conclusion. So here's my first paragraph. I'll work it through with you. Uh, national debt is the accumulated debt of the government. In other words, it's the amount of debt that has been uh, built up over time and yet to be repaid. Uh, then some application of the stock of debt. The national debt has gone up in many countries. Just last year in 2018, Japan had a national debt of 237% uh, of GDP. Greece, 174%. Italy, high. Contrasted with Germany, 56%. The UK, around 85 86 87%. Let's get into our first point. One reason why a government might target a fiscal surplus to cut the national debt is that debt, rising debt can lead to slower economic growth. This is the main argument here. This can be explained in part by crowding out theory, which argues that increased government spending and increased government borrowing then increases the supply of bonds. That drives bond prices lower and that leads to higher interest rates in the market for loanable funds. We'll come on to a diagram showing that in a second. <clears throat> if interest rates rise, then this might cause a contraction in planned investment by the private sector because the borrowing costs have become more expensive. As a result, connective phrase there, weaker investment causes a fall in aggregate demand. A weaker investment also has a negative effect on productive capacity and potentially on the country's trend growth rate. Cutting the national debt Improving the government's credit rating might therefore help to keep interest rates lower and help encourage consumption and investment from the private sector. Good example here of a chunky paragraph of analysis. There's some application in there, some knowledge, but crucially it's talking about perhaps cutting the debt could keep interest rates low and therefore uh, help prevent <coughs> a fall in economic growth. Evaluation point. Uh, although the national debt has increased in many countries, including the UK and Japan, it's important to assess the underlying causes of that increase in the debt. So if you're going to try and cut the debt, you need to understand what's, what's caused it to increase in the first place. For example, in the UK, much of the increase in debt in the first half of the current decade happened because of the bailouts of some banks and also because of the decision by the government in the recession to allow the automatic stabilizers of fiscal policy to work. In other words, they allowed the deficits to go up and that, of course, then increased the debt. Without that stimulus, without allowing that to happen, alongside interest rates cuts, there was the, the significant genuine risk of a deflationary depression in the UK. So that was avoided. And there's no automatic relationship between the size of debt and the country's GDP growth prospects. Then you bring in a different perspective Indeed, Keynesian economists, uh, compass, uh, contrasting here with fiscal conservatives, Keynesian economists argue that state borrowing to fund infrastructure, for example, whilst adding to debt in the short term, helps improve trend growth and will therefore create te tax revenues in the medium term. Oh yes, the analysis diagram uh, could well have come at the end of that first paragraph of analysis. So this is the crowding out theory. Uh, the real interest rate on the y-axis, the quantity of loanable funds on the x-axis. This is the idea if the government is borrowing more, then the demand for loanable funds increases. Obviously, it depends on the supply of loanable funds 
in an economy. But in theory, high levels of government borrowing, rising levels of debt could lead to an increase in interest rates, which is then feeds through to things like increase in corporate bond interest rates, increase in mortgages. The borrowing costs of the private sector go up. So my first point was that cutting the debt might be good for growth. And I counted it with a Keynesian view. My second analysis and application point is as follows. A second argument in favour, so signpost to the examiner is clearly that this is your second point. Second point in favour of fiscal austerity policies designed to control borrowing and eventually cut the debt is that high levels of debt cost billions of pounds in interest payments as the debt is serviced. A bit of knowledge there in the US, for example, the annual interest on debt, the interest on debt is nearly $10 billion a week. In the UK, uh, around 5% of government spending goes on interest payments, about £800 million a week. Fiscal conservatives believe that this imposes a big opportunity cost on the government. It means there's less available to spend on education, on health and on other key public services. They also argue that if the debt was cut, not only would interest payments fall, but that in the medium term, that would allow for reductions in, in taxes, direct and indirect taxes, which would then have a positive effect on demand along with aggregate supply. So fiscal conservatives believe that the state should be smaller, spend less, borrow less and run up less debt because that allows for a cut in the tax burden. That's my second point. My counter argument, uh, here's a nice evaluation phrase, although in theory, in theory, higher debt imposes a big financial burden on the government. In practice, um, the government effectively pays some of that debt back to itself. The, the government pays some of the, the interest to itself. Around a quarter of the debt is owned by the Bank of England through QE. Uh, so some of that money comes back. The, the scale of the debt also depends, of the interest payments, depends on the yield on government bonds. And just at the moment, in the case of the UK and Japan, the current nominal yield on 10-year debt issued new bonds is less than 2%, which means that in real terms, taking off inflation, the real interest rate on debt is effectively zero. And in this situation, again, Keynesian economists would argue that the crowding out is unlikely and that they would counter argue that in fact, if the real interest rate on debt is zero, this is the time that government should be increasing increasing the borrowing and investment in social housing, transport, healthcare, which in theory could have a multiplier effect, which generates higher tax revenues, therefore cutting the debt. This is sometimes known as crowding in. It's the opposite of crowding out. Then you need to come to a final reasoned comment. Again, your exam board will give you advice on just how long this needs to be. So here's my final reasoned comment on this question. The UK government owes 1.8 trillion. That's up by uh, nearly nearly 100% since 2009. The debt is stabilising at around 85, 86% of GDP. So how strong is the case for cutting spending or increasing taxes or both to reduce the size of the debt? Well, here's my final comment. A high level of debt could be a problem if bond yields for the UK start to rise again. Contextualised evaluation here. But in my opinion, this is unlikely in the current environment. Perhaps if there's a disorderly Brexit, that might cause the exchange rate to fall and bond yields to go up. But in reality, yields on debt have been low for a long time. And most of the UK debt is owned by insurance companies, like commercial banks, illiquid assets, pension funds and the Bank of England. So given that the majority of debt is owned by UK financial institutions and the Bank of England, they get the interest and much of that money either remains in the circular flow uh, and helps to fund pensions. So you can make a case for saying that debt itself is not necessarily a fundamental problem. My last point, high national debt is not inevitably a barrier to achieving good macroeconomic outcomes. So some sort of evaluative conclusion to bring your essay to a close. Thanks for joining in on this video.